Australia, the start of a new continent in our journey. When we left you, we were in Uruguay, putting our Defender in a cargo ship, leaving South America after two years of travel on the Pan American. 60 days later, it is time for us to fly down under. Unfortunately, the beginning of our Australian adventure ends up being compromised before even starting. But luck puts on our way the most generous humans who help us gear up to travel the tracks of southwestern Australia in the most Australian way. The first journey in Aussie territory culminates on some of the most beautiful beaches of the coast. Good day and welcome to Australia. We are Nick and Mathilde and we've left everything behind to travel the seven continents with our Land Rover Defender, the Albatross. Europe, North America, South America, Antarctica, Australia, Asia, and Africa. A world tour for real. We want to see it all. Join us for the best, the worst, the fantastic, the boring, the headaches, the beauty of every single moment of this journey around the world. This is day 714, and we're in Australia. This is the next Meridian Expedition. Australia, this giant country on the farthest of the world map. Look how big it is overlapped on the USA. And it only is home to 26 million people. Country is divided in seven regions. Our Land Rover Defender is scheduled to arrive here, in the capital of Western Australia, Perth. And here he is! Yo! Cool rig! Hello! <laughs> Welcome to Australia! That's two members of the trio who have reached Australia. Albatross, the third team member, and not the least, has not made it to Perth yet. We are both arrived in Australia, but our car, the Albatross, is still on the boat. The container is supposed to arrive... Friday. Friday. So we still have a few days before it arrives and then there's a full week of baseball work to get it out of the port. In the meantime, we're visiting Australia. Like Mathilde said, we're preparing everything. We're buying oils. Albatross is getting that liquid molly goodness. Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. Little bits and pieces that we need for Albatross. Australia Outback Essentials. I named the snake bite kit. Doesn't give you a lot of hope because when we ask them what to do with it, it's like, call for some help or go to a hospital. Basically, we shouldn't get bit by snakes. We're doing the groceries. We got Moosik 3, so the new drone Air 3. We are visiting around, we're going to the beach, we're getting a tan, we're having a good time. Wow! Hopefully by the end of the week we have a proper Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But main focus for us is get this car out of the port. Yes! Awesome! Let's go check out more of Perth! Soon, the short wait for our cargo to arrive extended to a long wait, and we are starting to get itchy feet. We were craving discovering Australia to reach some of its gems and remote landscapes, and we've been stuck in Perth for a few days already. But the beauty of the next marine expedition is that there's always a friend of the channel not far away. We've been in Australia for the past four days. Problem? The car is delayed, so the boat is only going to arrive in two days and then you need another five days to get the car out of the boat. But we are super lucky, we've been hosted by friends here and he's also giving us up for a little adventure while we wait the car to be released from the port. Let me introduce you to our great host. Hey guys! Hello! Hello. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Emu Export. Yeah, Austra uh, West Australia's prime beer. Yeah, you've got a, this is otherwise known as bush chook. The chicken from the bush, the bush chook, the emu. How lucky, since we arrived in Australia, we've been hosted by France. Technically what's happening right now, we're about to pack up for yep. a six day trip on the south of Perth. And he's lending us the Amarok. 
That's yes. incredible. Thank you so much. I was going to lend you the, the Land Rover, but it's having a Land Rover moment and it needs attention. So Land Rover moment. That's <laughs> it. having a Land Rover moment. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to our okay. first adventure in hey, Australia. Of course. <laughs> Sunday. The Australian swag. Okay. So we won't open it up. So this is basically like a canvas cocoon with a mattress and everything. So it's very quick to set up. Yeah. And you just throw everything in there and you go to sleep. Okay. And then you just roll it up into a big roll like this when you're done. Okay. But that's an Aussie swag. Okay. Okay. That's typical Australian camping material. If you do venture off-road yeah. and you may get stuck, obviously the recovery tracks, or we call them max tracks. Mm. Air compressor. Okay. Uh, to, to make sure that you are still attractive when you end up <laughs> We have a shower for you. Hot water we showers. We have a shower. <laughs> so lucky, a hot shower too. You might check for radio. Yeah. So in case you need to talk to the truckies on the road. Channel 40 in uh, Australia. Channel, yeah, channel 40 for the road channel. We were going to rent the cheapest car possible. Going with like small mattresses and sleeping bags. And we end up with a full setup. Shower included, and a four by four. <laughs> this it's is a land over, it's, it's close. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope your experience in Australia, particularly West Australia, is a wonderful one. The people here are very friendly, kind, and hospitable. We're a good people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be fine. Is nice. there a competition between Western West Australia and East Australia? Of course. And who's better? <laughs> <laughs> you, you need you even up. <laughs> We're creating problems right now. <laughs> A little later on. On the max tracks? Yeah, on the max tracks. That's put all there. Gas. That's a wrap. Everything packed up for this first adventure on Australian roads, France treats us with some Aussie specialties. It's a sort of Australian rite of passage. I named... Vegemite. I don't even know what is inside Vegemite. It's, it's a yeast extract. Malt. Malt and yeast. Yeast extract from barley, wheat, salt, mineral salt, malt extract from barley, blah 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 blah. It's vegan. It's vegan. It's vegan. And the cats like Vegemite? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you, you like Vegemite? Like I like Vegemite. You like Vegemite? I had my welcome last week and I like Vegemite. Nick, welcome to West Australia. Thank you so much. Here is a traditional West Australian welcome. So, Mathilde, it's your turn now. Welcome to West Australia. Thank you. This is a little welcome treat. Oh. Gotta grab a Vegemite. There you go. All right. You've never had Vegemite before? No. Okay. It's all me. Bon appetit. Enjoy. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh, that face says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Some say you need to grow up with it to get used to the taste. It goes <laughs> better with beer, doesn't it? It goes better with beer. <laughs> Verdict? Yes or no? Not every day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> forever the diplomat. <laughs> exactly. The next morning, it's time to go. Okay, you you guys ready for your big adventure? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. That's right. Safe travels. <laughs> Bye. We have a West Australia license plate on the car. Nick is driving a right hand drive vehicle and the sun is shining. I think it's official. We're in West Australia. Car is packed, everything is inside, the fuel's full. We can't wait. It's all happening right now. But first, we have to go meet somebody. We love meeting locals. So when an invite comes from an Australian from Perth, who also happens to be a Patreon from the channel, we make it a priority to meet them. Matt here briefs us on some of his favorite spots along the way, including some hints of where to find our dream Aussie beach for this first journey. Thank you, Matt. A distinctive red dirt on the roadside. There is no more network on the phone, nor there is radio channels working. Here, a warning sign.
kangaroos crossing. Now and then, a car. Just enough to remind us that we're moving in this landscape. This is day one on the road in Australia, and the repetitiveness does not transform into boredom. This set, we've dreamt of it, and we know that somewhere beyond those flatlands, we will find the coastline of the south. We're on our way to Wave Rock. There's uh, 400 kilometers from Perth till there. The road is actually in great condition. We're driving at 110, that's a speed limit. And in Australia, you follow the speed limit. I did not expect to be so many fields. We saw some sheep, we saw some farm fields. I was thinking it was full desert and it's kind of a mix. Um, the Amarok is a very easy car to drive. We're actually enjoying it, it's all automatic. Uh, huge different from Albatross, but it's, it's all a new experience. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm just a bit disappointed because uh, the first kangaroos I've seen in Australia were road kills on the side of the road. And we saw three of them already, so I hope I'll see a kangaroo alive by the end of the day or tomorrow, after tomorrow, because I was really excited about seeing them. <laughs> oh, no. It's a bit sad. It is, yeah. <laughs> New drone for the new continent. Yeah, Mustique uh, number three is ready for his first flight actually. All right, droney. Ready? ready? Yeah. Exactly what we expected of Australia, red gravel road creating the red dust uh, and the sunsets. Beautiful! Welcome to camp. This is the Australian way. Everything just slides out. Looks beautiful. Yeah, so we've got to set up our tent. We need to set up uh, cooking stuff. Listen to the and we're full of parrots all around us. And we're going to set up right here behind the car so that we're very close. We have a neighbor over there, an Australian neighbor. and. Uh, yeah, let's get started because it's already almost 6 p.m. Lesson number one, don't park so late at night. <laughs> we parked at uh, 6 p.m. Now it's full dark, we're cooking, there's tons of mosquitoes, flies, all that stuff. We had to set up the, what is it called in Australia? Australian swag. Australian swag, it's all set up. Um, tonight is curry night and then tomorrow we're going to stop around 4 p.m. so that we don't do this again. Uh, and we did see a kangaroo on the way here. Um, and they usually come out after 4 p.m. so we need to be careful. A kangaroo alive. And a live kangaroo, that's but true. But didn't get to film it, it went too fast. This is awesome though. First night in Australia cooking by ourselves, traveling in a Australian ute, and going to sleep in an Australian tent. What is it called again? Swag. I gotta learn that word. I think we'll do better tomorrow. Yes, we will.
lesson number two, wake up before the flies. I don't know if you can hear them. You can probably see them. They're all around, but it's all right. We slept marvelously in this thing, because you can open all of the sides and the and top and you can watch the stars while sleeping, so that's absolutely genius. Really cool, really, really cool. Those flies are less cool. It teaches you to be very calm. We are going to make a tradition of Australia to show regularly the map and where we are on this giant country. Which one? There we go. There we go. We're doing the southwest corner of Australia in Western Australia. We're starting in Perth and we're going to go along the whole highway until Hayden and then we're going down to Esperance and we might do a few beaches here. We might do Cape Arid uh, National Park. The idea is that for every episode uh, we'll show you a little bit how far and what we've been doing yeah how we're progressing around Australia so this map will be our new little friend for the next few months is to reach a beautiful beach by the Southern Ocean. But for now, despite the hundreds of kilometers covered, the roads remain unchanged. Just pure straightness and fields running through endless horizons. On these routes, we are a small player. It is the territory of the road trains, transporting livestock, minerals, fuel, or general freight. They look like giant caterpillars. From the back, we can't always know their length, but they can be several trailers long, tied to each other. Imagine passing those giants. At those moments, we thank the long and straight roads to overtake them. What strikes us the most is the dryness around. The fields are burnt by the heat and the sun. We've heard the locals complaining that the rains are late this year, and we have difficulty imagining the place under the rain, but regularly we glance at floodway signs on the side of the road. A good reminder, the place can change face in a matter of a rainfall. After so many hours of driving, finally we can take a little break because we found something here called Wave Rock. Check it out. It's some sort of uh, prehistoric uh, rock wave formed by water apparently, 15, 15 meters high and 110 meters long. It's pretty cool. Wave Rock. From Wave Rock, we know we're just one straight line away from the Southern Ocean. By one straight line, I mean 300 kilometers. An everyday drive by Aussie standards. But no more joking. We eventually reached the coastline and it did not fail to impress us. We're getting closer to our objective. Remember you and I would always 
always find somewhere to hide when we were kids so we could see and hear the water run the river's gonna cry when you're gone Good morning. So it's not always glorious traveling our style because um, we made it to the coast, but on the coastline where we are, camping is not allowed. And the few official campsites that exist, they're like fully booked, like six months in advance, and like twenty dollars per person. So we're on a gravel pit that we found on this app WikiCamp, which is the app you need to use to find campsites in Australia. But yeah, free and not far from the ocean, that's what we found. <laughs> so we were sleeping here, we had our tent, and um, what we did is we also showered. This shower th system is pretty cool. We look at the water temperature. It's uh, 18 Celsius in the water tank, and 35 out the spigot. Technically, just a pump in the water. It goes through that machine, heats it up, and then to the <laughs> Nice. So we had a little shower and we're living out of our backpacks. These Matador bags are a little bit our home. So we have everything in here. We even have the toiletry bag. Matador has the same one in white. We have these pouches that keep all of our clothes organized. And then these little compartment it's a really easy to travel when we don't have albatross and at the same time this little tiny little bag that is kind of my personal favorite and uh easy for when we're traveling around town so it's easy because it all chucks in like that in the car and we just live out of our matador backpacks for the next few days a.m. We are 30 minutes away from a town called Esperance by the coastline. Fun fact, did you know that Esperance was named by French sailors and Esperance means hope in French. What do you hope for in Australia? Me, I think for Australia would be convoying with other vehicles around Australia to go find the wildest camp spots by the beach and have a whole view it's in front of us, white sand, sunset. That for me would be the Australian experience. What are you hoping for? I hope for seeing every single animal in this country. Many people warned us like, you'll be scared of the spiders and the snakes and surely I'll be scared, but I still want to see them all, not too close. Yeah, and you finally saw a kangaroo. Uh, yeah, I saw. I went running this morning, I saw two kangaroos, no camera with me. I will get a kangaroo on film by the end of this week, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. hopefully. We head to the coast further east to what was recently elected the most beautiful beach on earth. By all means, we want to see it. Welcome to Lucky Bay. This is our lucky day because it's a sunny day. Nice. <laughs> We're driving on white sand on the beach. And this place is incredibly beautiful. The water is so clear. I don't think we, I've ever seen something this clean.
no luck today on the tracks. It's not going to be as easy as South America for off-roading because I had planned a little track that was going down the, the coast all the way to the next beach and it's closed with a barrier and I think in Australia we're going to find a lot of these roadblocks so this is the second one in the past two days that we found so I think uh, we're going to have to stick to the tracks a lot more and be less adventurous This road closure is a setback but we don't abandon that easily we have one goal to conclude our first Australian adventure. Watch the sunset four wheels and feet in the sand. Awesome, awesome beach. This is our third night camping in Australia. Honestly, this is incredible. It's, uh, it's cool. It's exactly what we thought it would be like and it's delivered exactly what we were hoping for. Are you happy? Yeah, it's gorgeous and we arrived right on time for the sunset. We hope we'll find more of those in Australia already because this is what we like. And the sand, I don't know if we filmed the color of the sand already, but it's white, like, I didn't see much sand white like this in my life. We've made it. That is the Australian sunset at the beach we were dreaming of when imagining our journey down under. Eating Vegemite on toast, driving on red dirt tracks, getting flies in our eyes, sleeping under the stars in an awesome swag, bush truck cheering with a new mate. We've dedicated our first days in the country to explore the Australian cliches and are now ready to move beyond and discover what's more to uncover in Oz. Subscribe to the channel and come explore this legendary country with us. Next on the expedition, we travel to the rainbow coast of Australia as we impatiently wait for news from the Australian customs on the release of our Land Rover Defender. Oh, and before leaving you, here are some kangaroos we found. Hey.